Okay, this is uh, my second time today making a video. It is, again, Wednesday, the 17th of May, 2023. And I want to discuss something that I've actually been thinking about uh, a lot more in recent days, and that has to do with Jesus, particularly with respect to the question of the noose. Uh, so it's a two-part video, two-part question. Did Jesus have a noose? And number two, was it created or uncreated? Uh, the noose in Eastern Orthodox thought, in Eastern thought, refers to, it means intellect or mind. And that um, is not a reference to the mind as we would normally think of it. It's not a reference to the brain or the thought, process that go, thought processes that go on up inside our heads. Uh, the intellect or noose refers to what is um, interchangeably called the the eye of the soul, the seat of the soul, or the center of the soul. Now, this idea is not um, original to Christianity. This was taught by um, the idea, the very idea or concept of the noose was taught um, by Aristotle, and it was taught long before Aristotle by Parmenides, although we don't have much of Parmenides' writings available on it. Um, the, for Aristotle, the noose transcended both sense perception and our normal um, reasoning process. It had to do with a, a universal style of logic or a universal thought pattern um, that all men, regardless of what their what, regardless of their walk of life or where they come from, have universal access to. That is just intrinsic or innate to us. Um, and it, it the emphasis goes a little bit further in theology, in the realm of theology, um, the noose is a receptor of um, divine grace or outside divine assistance. The noose is that which enters into direct communion with God and unites itself or attaches itself to the divine which is typically done through um, meditative practice or mystical practice. Mystical, you know, discipline, disciplines. Um, the equivalent, more or less, concept of the noose in Sanatana Dharma is the buddhi. The Sanskrit term is buddhi, B-U-D-D-H-I. There's a term for mind that is manas, M-A-N-A-S, but it's, it's, buddhi is actually closer to what noose is referring to. Um, it's, it has more to do with, um, knowing oneself or, um, being in a state of alertness or being awake, being aware. And it is that which um, it is that vehicle whereby we unite ourselves to God. But bringing this back to Christology and to a critique of the church's teaching on Jesus, what is, I mean, I, I really don't see it presented or addressed or discussed very much. I'm sure it has been. But since the noose is an integral part of the soul, and the soul is said to be um, part of the uh, human nature, then we would have to conclude that the noose is created, would we not? Um, or, or perhaps you could argue that the noose is um, gives us access to the eternal, or perhaps touches the eternal while yet being accessed from within the created soul. But we're going to critique 
the implications of either one for uh, the church's theology of, 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 of Christ. Um, if Jesus were fully human, he would need to have a noose. Be, be, for the reasons that we just mentioned, that uh, the noose is an integral part of the soul. Um, the body and the soul are considered equally created. Um, it was part of Christ's human nature, the soul, not his uncreated nature. Um, the uncreated aspects of the Logos are the person proper and the divine nature that he possesses, according to the church's claim. That he possesses in common with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So, it would need to be the soul, at the very least, would need to be created. But if we say that the noose is created, in his case, um, then we would have to argue that he needs outside grace from God. He needed outside grace from God in order to be raised or transfigured into uh, divine union with the Father. And I'm not suggesting that that necessarily implies he was a sinner, that it, that it would logically imply that, Adam had the ability, according to the church's teaching, before the fall, to because, because the claim is that he was created in an in-between state, between mortality and immortality. Um, had he continued in obedience, he would have uh, obtained deification or theosis. But Adam was still a creature. The Logos is not a creature. The Logos is an uncreated person. So this is where the difficulty comes in. If we say that Jesus needed to be, by grace, assumed back into the Godhead in some sense, that suggests that he was diminished, his divinity was somehow diminished intrinsically in the act of descending and becoming incarnate. Which, of course, they don't want to go there. That's not something that the church teaches. It would be considered a heresy. But if you say that the inner man, the noose, the center of the soul, has an, has an uncreated aspect to it, now you're in the unenviable position of having to justify how, in any sense, created beings like you and me are uncreated. Because that's not part of the church's teaching either. That would also diminish the, the binary separation that is um, fundamental to the church's commitment to the doctrine of creation ex nihilo, to their fundamental commitment to that basic dualism. Um, so this is also a mammoth difficulty for the church to answer. If he was created... If, the, if Jesus' noose was created, then he had to be saved in some sense. Or he had to be deified in some sense. But how did he need to be deified if the person of the Logos is intrinsically uncreated and divine? But if the noose is uncreated, then that means it's uncreated for us too, right? Um, or it means that Jesus wasn't fully human. If, in fact, his noose was substantially distinct from the makeup of our noose. So I, either he wasn't fully human, or we are in some sense eternal and divine, which goes against the very idea of needing to be saved by grace from some outside force or outside being. Um, so you can see where dualism uh, results in a, another quandary, yet another quandary for the church. And that's pretty much all I had to say on that one. Thanks again for listening. Bye.